everyone uh, and uh, good evening for all the people in Europe and good morning for all the people in the US. Uh, this week is a very important week, is the shockwave, uh, uh, shock week uh, uh, with Vascopedia, essentially three days of uh, cases, live cases with, uh, of course, comments uh, from uh, uh, faculty and actually a discussion about this uh, new technology, uh, I mean, sort of new technology, which is uh, uh, taking more, uh, having more and more funds around uh, the world. Essentially, today we have uh, the pleasure to be live for Bad Crossingen with Dr. Uh, Dr. Elias Nuri. And uh, we, we thank him for his, uh, his, uh, his uh, presence in the lab as usual. He's a master of uh, recanalization. And actually, we have a, a very, very estimate faculty, which is made by uh, three great uh, uh, clinicians. One uh, is uh, Professor Athanasios Saratsis from Leicester in the UK. Then the, the Dr. Bella Wasen from uh, Bolton, still in UK in uh, Lancashire. And then uh, Dr. Enric uh, uh, Alejandre Lafonte from St. Gallen in uh, Switzerland. So essentially, we we uh, are going to uh, watch the uh, Dr. Nuri um, doing a live case, and then we're going to switch to some uh, case presentation with recorded cases and uh, some more discussion. So, Elias, uh, you're already uh, in your cat lab, aren't you? Hello, Lorenzo. Thank you very much uh, for introducing me. Dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present um, a live case. This is um, a 68 years uh, male patient with a um, TAOD according to Rutherford three to four at the left side. So he has a calf claudication with a walking capacity of uh, only 10 meters and he feels some uh, foot hypostasia at, the, uh, at rest. He was uh, already treated uh, just some weeks ago uh, with a recanalization and D plus D and stent PTA of the right CFA. His risk factor are nicotine abuse, hyperlipoproteinemia, arterial hypertension. Next slide, please. The non-invasive examination showed the ABI at rest um, at the right side 0.8 and at the left side 0.4. And the duplex scan showed um, heavy calcified femoral popliteal artery um, stenosis and a subtotal occlusion at the distal part of SFA. As you can see in the um, duplex scan, next slide, please. Um, there was a, a lot of calcium with a completely a shadow. We, um, I didn't. Um, it wasn't possible to um, detect the uh, color, as you can see, and just the. Uh, a very, very small flow um, with only 20 or 30 um, centimeters per second. And the popliteal artery is reperfused, but uh, with a monophasic um, uh, flow profile. Next slide, please. So this is an um, angiography from the left side, which was done uh, just uh, okay, okay, okay. Wait a second. Let, let, let's go back to the, yeah. the slide before, because I mean, before your plan, I would like to hear from the people online what they would do. Can you please uh, uh, come up with the first poll? So essentially, it's a lesion at the level of the distal SFA, which is one of the segments where the vessel usually bends more together with the popliteal. So I mean, to me, it looks like uh, what we can call a no stand zone, and I think we we all agree with that. Uh, and actually, the the poll. Is asking uh, to you, can I see the poll on the screen? Uh, we'll, we'll ask to you uh, which kind of treatment would you prefer? Would you be your first, uh, your first uh, line treatment? Essentially, it's a, it's a treatment uh, that needs to be done. Of course, the, the wire needs to cross uh, probably intraluminally. I don't think there's a, there's a huge difficulty in doing this with an 014 wire, but then you need to choose the, the treatment. Okay, the, the poll. Uh, for this, uh, like the treatment is the, 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 the sequence. How would you approach this lesion? So one option is the POBA, so single uh, normal angioplasty. The second option you can vote is a directional atherectomy. The third one is rotational atherectomy. The fourth is the scoring or cutting balloon, so some uh, special uh, balloon, or if not, fifth uh, option, IVL. So it would be nice to see uh, which, are the, which are your thoughts, uh, guys. Guys, or the ones who are online. So uh, let me ask, for example, to uh, Thanos. Do you want to go through the through the options? What do you think is uh, is feasible in such a lesion? I think the uh, to start with, it, it's a graded or a stepwise process. So I think you need to stay in intraluminal, and like you said, um, I would start with an O on four wire and do my very best to stay intraluminal. Um, then POBA 
for me, probably doesn't have a place here. Um, I think you'll see quite a lot of recoil plus minus dissection. Um, uh, it, it is eccentric. I'm not seeing the full duplex or cross-sectional pictures, but it looks eccentric to me. So I would probably start with IVL here um, because of the degree of calcium that I can see. Uh, but the main thing is that I want to stay in Tralumino and keep all my options open. Okay, I think it's it's a very wise plan. Now, if we can see the results of the poll, and so it's it's good. So essentially, Thanos probably they listen to you. Uh, no one is gonna uh, would use the the poba because, as you said, I think that we can discuss it later also with Elias. Uh, the, the rate of dissection in such a lesion could be quite high, so you wouldn't end up stenting this lesion probably. Twenty five percent would use uh, the uh, directional arterectomy. Rotational arterectomy uh, are the 25% and 50% would use the IVL. So uh, uh, do you want, to, uh, Rick, do you want to uh, comment a little bit on uh, why would you not, for example, or would you use a, a, a directional or non-directional uh, arterectomy in such a lesion? So I, I like arterectomy a lot, as you know, but uh, in this case, uh, my experience with heavy calcified lesions is that uh, the directional arterectomy uh, is not uh, effective enough and uh, causes a lot of embolisms, or at least you have to work with a filter. And um, you need a lot of time and maybe you will always slip. If it's eccentric, you will slip from the calcium and go inside the soft, softer tissue and then you might even perforate. So I think uh, I wouldn't do um, unidirectional atherectomy in this case, so I would choose IVL too. Okay, I think I think it's a it's a definitely a good explanation. Also, the, the jet stream, for example, would probably go towards the the place where there's less resistance, so it will just scrape. This, as a funnel really wisely said, it's not like a concentric calcium; it's also eccentric, so it will just scrape the surface of this uh, this plaque going somewhere else. Okay, so Elias, now because you are the operator, you are the, the magician. So tell us what you think and how you're going to treat this uh, lesion then. Okay. Um... Can you show me the next slide, please? Okay, so this is my treatment strategy. I have already placed a seven French sheath at the left groin, an anti-grade approach. Um, I will uh, take a 014 um, inch guide wire to cross the lesion. And uh, maybe if necessary, independent of the lesion, if there is really a completely um, occluded part, so I would uh, make a pre-dilatation just uh, to avoid um, uh, to damage the shockwave balloon catheter. And that is my also my uh, treatment of uh, choice vessel preparation with uh, shockwave followed by DCB. And if necessary, I would um, cover the lesion with a short stand like Supera or something. I think so, it sounds which... like a very good plan. So let, let's, let's see where you are then. Uh, on the okay. on the, on the case, let's switch to. Can the we live, switch uh... now to the live screen? Yeah, well, do you see now the live screen? We do. Okay, that's now uh, just a fluoro from the target lesion. As you can see, there is a um, heavy calcified SFA, the distal part, and I will show you now the angiography from the origin of SFA downstream. So it is a very Big vessel, so I show you now the target lesion in conventional angiography, but also in DSA. And as you can see, I already made a measurement of the reference vessel. It's like uh, around about seven millimeter. Um, and at the distal part, uh, which was not described in the duplex scan, there is also in the popliteal artery um, stenosis. The, the popliteal artery also at the middle part um, with the tandem stenosis around about 70%. Uh, there is the vessel only 6.2 millimeter. And below the knee, um, there are two vessels run off by um, anterior tibial artery and perineal artery with a very nice um, dorsalis pedis. Typical heavy smoker. So my question is for yeah. you. So this is a patient which I would classify as a Rutherford three to four. Uh, are you willing to open just this SFA, which is badly stenotic, or also do you want to tackle the popliteal? So I would um, 
say it would be better to um, revascularize uh, him completely. So it is uh, not really an occlusion of the popliteal artery in case of an occlusion, a collateralized occlusion. So I would um, leave it only by SFA, but in this case, I would treat also popliteal artery and um, SFA. Very good. Do you plan to use shockwave for both lesions? Yes, that's the question. So now the first question is which size um, should exactly. be and that's an, and, and, and that's the poll. That that's the poll. So bring up the the poll, please. So essentially, as as uh, Elias said, I mean, uh, there are different ways to measure the artery. There's people who are measuring it uh, under CT if they do the CT. I personally don't. There's people measuring under duplex. You can ask your your technician to measure before and after in order to have a, a good sizing. There's people measuring with IVOS. So essentially, especially in US, you put the IVOS in and you get a good uh, a good uh, size. And actually, there's the last thing as Elias did. There's also the the, the calibration with the catheter, which is uh, within the patient, in order to understand the diameter. So having, having uh, said all these kind of uh, possible different measures, in your experience, in which in this case, which size of balloon would you use? And actually, the, the options are option number one, 5.5 or smaller as a shockwave treatment, okay? N not mentioning the predilatation as Dr. Nuri said before. 5.5, the first option. 6 millimeter is the second option. 6.5 is the third option. Seven millimeter is the fourth option. And guess what? Eight millimeter is the fifth option. So I give you a little time to, uh, to, to, to think about it. And I will ask people, you know, Dr. Wazen, how do you usually measure the vessels in your, uh, in your uh, center? Just generally speaking, of course, every case could be different. But do you, for example, do you do CTs for all your cases? Almost all are CTA or MRA. Um, traditionally, probably you would have some idea from the CTA and then the rest is done via the angio. But I'd say within this year, I've moved on to Doppler uh, on the table. So I would I would do it myself. And I found that a lot more accurate. OK, that's that's very nice. Essentially, I think it's a very much cheaper way uh, in a way to 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 measure. Also, less struggle for radiologists in order to <laughs> report the scans. So anyway, OK, having said that, let's have a look to what people think uh, about this uh, this uh, sizing, because also it's important then to discuss why the balloon should be sized in a certain way. So let's have, let's have a look to the results of the poll. I'm very curious and I hope that people Oh, that's very nice. Uh, so essentially, most of the people would go, definitely most of the people go for seven millimeter and uh, one fourth of the people would go for the 6.5. Um, I mean, I will ask uh, uh, Dr. Lafont to discuss about this, uh, these results quickly, and then we'll see what Dr. Nuri has already the balloon. So he didn't vote, but he already has his idea. So Enrique, what do you think? So uh, I, I recall that the vessel was about uh, nearly seven millimeters, right? Mm. Exactly. So I would use the eight millimeter shockwave. Eight millimeter. Thanos, yeah. what would you do? Um, if I was treating just the proximal end of it, uh, probably eight. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say eight millimeters. Um, but again, I, I, I don't do my sizing these days based just on the, uh, the angiogram. I would probably, especially for a Clodican, I, I would like to be very precise with my sizing, so I, I'd get the IBUS out if I could. Okay, Bella? Yeah, eight. Eight, okay. So essentially, I would just want to remember to refresh one thing. There's also the popliteal lesion to be treated. And actually, oh. you know, the, it's very important just as a general feeling, uh, we all know that, but it's good for the viewers, that the IVL needs to be sized 1.1, essentially, if at least the same size of the vessel, but even because low pressure go a little bit higher. So uh, maybe with one balloon, we can get rid of both with a seven millimeter balloon. What do you think, Elias? So uh, my idea was also to take an eight millimeter balloon. The question is, uh, what should I do with the popliteal um, artery? And uh, in my opinion, I think it would be possible to go with the eight millimeter, but only with one or two atmosphere, give only two or three shocks in the popliteal artery. And I would cover, this, uh, cover the lesion then with a um, seven millimeter um, DCB. And for SFA, clearly eight millimeter, uh, that would be my choice, yeah. Okay, but we all agree that no one would go below the seven, am I right? 
Exactly. Yeah. Because that's a very important message, I think, to pass. So, okay, yeah. so you're, you're, you're treating the popliteal lesion first, am I right? Did you do any pre-dilatation or are you going directly with the balloon? Uh, so I already done a pre-dilatation, but only at the um, SFA with a three millimeter balloon. I can show you uh, here, is it? So it was just a pre-dilatation with a three millimeter balloon, as I already mentioned, just to um, avoid to damage the balloon catheter, the shockwave. And I will start now with the um, popliteal artery with only, I would say, um, two or three cycles um, okay. in the popliteal artery, and then I pull back the balloon catheter and the SFA. Okay, and, and, and you see the light uh, uh, going on, and you see the, the, that the new catheter compared to the old one, I don't know how many were used to the old one, uh, is as uh, double the velocity, and actually it makes the intervention quicker, and actually all the operators are happier. So essentially, uh, I mean, uh, still there are 300 uh, pulses and divided, of course, in 10 cycles. So in a lesion uh, which like this, uh, Dr. Nuri said he's going to use two to three cycles for the popliteal and the rest uh, for the SFA. Uh, it's also important to mention that the, the, the marker in the middle has almost the double the power of, uh, of the normal other markers. So if you have a spot of calcium, which is particularly uh, difficult. It's important to inflate uh, the balloon accordingly to put it the marker, the central marker, the level, the most tough calcium. Is what you all do, uh, Thanos? Do you do the same? Okay. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and you see now Dr. Nuri is moving the balloon a bit in order to treat the whole uh, segment, but uh, uh, it's, I think it's very important to, to keep in mind that, uh, of course, the central marker is, uh, is uh, definitely the most powerful. So you see, and uh, Dr. Nuri, would you like to explain to us and to the people who are more junior, uh, what's the, what's the um, inflation, uh, uh, at, you know, how many atmospheres do you inflate the balloon? So I didn't, uh, usually for... Um... SFA in this case, I would go up to four atmosphere only and give some uh, 30 shocks. And then um, you can go up to six atmosphere, but um, in the majority of cases, uh, is it enough, not more than six atmosphere. And uh, that's also the reason um, that um, we avoid a in the majority of cases a dissection, you know. Um, so that's only a low pressure dilatation uh, with a um, with, with a shockwave balloon. Um, that means four atmosphere uh, with activate, activated um, um, shocks means that's around about fifty atmosphere. So we induce a micro fracture of the superficial and uh, deep um, calcium, and uh, we achieve a much better. Um, compliance of the vessel with a yeah, I, very low pressure. I think that's, uh, that's very wise. So essentially, the only thing you want is the balloon to be in contact with the calcium in order to get the, the most uh, uh, powerful uh, power of uh, the device in order to crack the calcium. And Enrique, do you, what's, for example, what's your algorithm? You start to, at two, then you upsize to four, then from four to six, what's your algorithm instead? Well, I looked at, I have full contact with the vessel wall. And then I start uh, the IVL, uh, usually not uh, really depending on the pressure. I start with the lowest pressure. And then I try, I, I look at the beginning if the pressure falls, which means that the IVL is working. And so I, I maintain the pressure at the level. As long as I see an effect, I stay at this pressure. And if I don't see an effect, I go maybe up to four. Uh, usually if it's, it's the SFA or, or popliteal artery, I think, you can go you start with four, but in this case, with an eight millimeter balloon in the popliteal artery, I would start with two atmospheres and uh, watch the balloon uh, and see if it works. I think it's it's very wise. Again, you know, you know, stop. We need to increase the violence step by step. Of course, the plaque changes its own, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, elasticity doing uh, doing our bal ballooning. So essentially we can upsize a little bit the atmospheres, but very gently because what we want is not to create dissection. So essentially we just want to crack this calcium. And any comment, uh, Bella, do you want to comment on why, you know, possibly the, the, the shockwave has a such a, I would say low, but I would say almost, uh, uh, you know, no rate of embolizations. What happens in the vessel? 
I think it's just getting the concept of understanding that these are sonic waves you're cracking. It's not that you've, you've got a balloon here to PTA. It's almost like a molding balloon and then shock, shocking through ultrasonic waves, um, which then is this concept I had to get my head around at the beginning because I was scared that you're going to crack and, and trash, but it, that's, that's not the point. It's not a PTA balloon. Um, the other concept to get around is that this is part of your scaffolding for whatever you're going to do next. It's not it all be all and, and that's it. So this is more that it will help the compliance of your vessel so that you can then proceed. So because you're cracking, you're not actually working um, as a, a final treatment. You shouldn't, in theory, see any distal touch wood. As of yet, I haven't seen it. Because yeah, also, I mean, uh, there are both, and then Thanos will present some data, but both the randomized control trial and the large, uh, uh, you know, observational trial, they don't show any, any case of embolization. So now, Elias, now you're treating the, the most, uh, uh, the most uh, stenotic part, am I right? Exactly. Now I'm at the distal part of SFA, and um, I already give the two cycles of shocks, and as you can see, the balloon is uh, maybe, yeah, completely expanded. With the... yeah, so you're doing well with no air bubbles, which is fantastic. I think it must be yeah. your three-way tap system. I'm very impressed by that. Yeah, it's, it's very important to mention that. Uh, thanks, Bella, because I mean, uh, as uh, many radiologists probably will know, and uh, you know, when they scan uh, uh, very large uh, <laughs> and uh, distended bowel uh, patients, uh, the worst enemy of the ultrasound, so diagnostically and uh, you know, during the, your intervention with shockwave is air. So essentially, it's important that you don't have uh, bubbles, air bubbles in your balloon in order to maximize the use of uh, and the passage of the shonic waves. So essentially, Elias, uh, I mean, uh, you have uh, you have the, 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 the proof of uh, validity from Bella, and then you're doing a great job with no air into the balloon. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so that's uh, really very important to um, prepare the balloon catheter before we start. So we make a uh, deflation uh, several times just to be sure there is no bubble. It's a very important point, yeah. When you're doing all of this, like Lorenzo said, without staff, we're used to luxury of at least two radiographers, two IR nurses faffing over. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, in the US is maybe everything possible, but uh, we have to save, uh, a lot of money here and for the hospital, you know. But at least you have some friends here online to to keeping you, you know, company. Because if not, you would you would have felt very alone. So, yeah. oh, um, and out of interest, the patient is it a local anesthetic, a regional block, a GA? What are you doing for your patient? Only with the local anesthetic, yeah. Okay. And do you do the GA yourself also, or do you sometimes you have anesthetist? No, 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 no. Everything by myself. <laughs> Okay, they told me also you're a very good porter and you, <laughs> after you finish and you clean the room and you bring the patient back to the ward, am I right? <laughs> no, 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 that's not. But uh, so the treatment uh, is uh, by the doctors alone, you know, by in the majority of cases. So sometimes we have also some fellows here in our cath lab, but in the majority of times. I'm not sure are... I want my hospital to be listening to this part. Shall we focus back on shockwave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's very good. I mean, actually, you almost finished with your cycles, am I right? How many yeah. cycles do you see that? So now is it the last cycle? And you can see now EOL, end of life, is achieved. So it was um, six cycles in the SFA and four in the popliteal artery. And I will give you now an angiography mm -hmm. before DCB. Sure. Then. Cool. Thanos, because you, you, you are a scientist instead of a plumber like me. So I'm asking you, in such a lesion, how much difference you think that a DCB does compared to normal uh, POBA? Well, if you look at the mechanics of DCB, it wouldn't really make much of a difference if you compare it to POBA just from a mechanics point of view, right? Uh, a DCB is practically an angioplasty balloon. Um, in terms of what difference does it make over longer term patency, um, well, unfortunately, the studies have not really stratified outcomes with regards to patency based on calcification. 
Uh, there's a number of series out there that have done regressions to look at whether calcification defined in all sorts of ways does impact on patency. But I cannot really answer your question with, with hardcore data. Mm, um, I, mean, it, I know, that's why, that's why I asked the question. So if yeah. you don't have data, no one has data. So essentially, it's, it could be a good, a good discussion about which treatment is best. And, wow, that's yeah. great. Look at that. That's that, really a very nice result, yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, like this is like it's uh, when we say that a shockwave is not a standalone treatment, but almost yeah. is. Because, I mean, it creates the basis then for just an angioplasty, a simple POBA probably uh, would, do, would do even the job. So yeah, let's have a look also to the popliteal. It's very nice to see that there's no dissection and actually the flow is, uh, is uh, very brisk and the diameter is definitely the right one. So definitely seven millimeter was the right answer. Well done for people who said seven millimeter, at least. So let's see now the popliteal. Ready, steady, go. Yeah, it's good to protect yourself with the screen, yeah, because people like passing all the day in to the cat lab. Okay, that's 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 a very good result. I still see a little bit of stenosis in the popliteal, which is actually fine because we're gonna do still the poba. So as we said, it's a it's a good vessel prep tool. And let's see uh, what happens then. W which size of balloon would you use now, uh, Elias? So I would take now a seven millimeter DCB for popliteal and eight millimeter for SFA. Okay, that's a very good plan. Uh, so in, in the meantime, you do this. Why don't we go for Thanos? You're gonna explain a little bit about uh, the data and the case, and then we can come, come back to you. What do you think, Elias? And yeah, it's okay, it's okay, perfect. Okay, so Thanos, uh, the, the floor is yours. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, show us uh, uh, what you, what you yeah. have prepared. Okay, here we are, data now in English. Um, great, um, so I'll, I'll spend a few moments to just go through some data with regards to calcified fempop lesions from the, the PAD3 randomized control trial. Just as a reminder, this is a, an efficacy trial with um, a primary outcome of procedural success. And it's important to know how they defined procedural success so it was defined as residual stenosis after your primary treatment of less than 30% without a flow limiting dissection. And I'll come to it in a sec as to why this is quite important. But then the, uh, the study was actually powered in order to look at primary patency at one year um, as well. So you could say that primary patency at one year was in a way a cold primary uh, outcome measure. About 300 patients, they, they, the vast majority had very calcified uh, de novo fempop lesions, and half of them were randomized to receive IVL as the primary treatment before DCB, and the other half were randomized to receive um, as a primary treatment uh, plain balloon angioplasty. 45 sites, about 300 patients. The important things to note here these were severely calcified lesions, and that is very unique in the literature because all of the other trials funded by industry in the FEMPOP um, region, they, they don't really specify the degree of calcification, and we're also looking at 13 centimeters of average <laughs> length. <laughs> Um, with regards to the, the early results, uh, using IVL as your primary treatment has got um, superior results uh, in terms of procedural success when you look at uh, their primary of residual stenosis of less than 30% without a big dissection. And it is an atraumatic treatment. There was a 77% reduction compared um, to PTA as your primary treatment. Um, there was a 77% reduction in type C. That's the, the bad flow limiting dissections. Um, there were no embolizations within the IVL group. There were no vessel preparations. Um, and um, the, the, the dissections that they had seen did not affect flow distal uh, to the treated segment and it reduced bailout stenting by 75%. So that's an, a 75% absolute risk reduction when you compare it with uh, plain angioplasty as your first treatment. Primary patency two years was 
54% for IVL and 58, 57% for uh, PTA. Um, there's a cohort study as well out there, which looked at different areas rather than just the FEMPOP segment. So what we're looking at here is a cohort study or observational study of um, 700 patients. And uh, we're looking at other vessel beds as well, like the iliac arteries below the knee and the common femoral artery. And why is that important? Well, it's important because the results of um, IVL were excellent across all vessel beds, and they, they were at least comparable or actually in most cases superior uh, to treating the lesion, the calcified lesion with um, a PTA primary uh, treatment. Um, so that's all I had to say about data. I think uh, this provides quite a lot of decent evidence, randomized evidence uh, from an efficacy point of view. Uh, the, the treatment is definitely feasible, it is definitely safe, and there's now decent one and two year uh, outcomes with regards to patency. Let's go back to Elias. Elias, I think you finished with your DCB, am I right? And I will give you now my last and final angiography. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It, I mean, the, 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 the segment that you treated is even <laughs> looks better than the rest, which was actually was asymptomatic. So a very good result, I would say. There's no dissection. There's no absolutely no need for stent. There's a great flow. Uh, of course, probably the, the patient doesn't have the best cardiac output because it's, the flow is, is quite low. And actually, it's the same thing when uh, you do aneurysms. Big vessels always uh, go low. But I mean, the flow is great. And let's see now the results of the level of the popliteal. And again, great results. Great results. There is a uh, residual stenosis, maybe a, a very short at the... Uh... Middle part. Because this is what we saw also before. Yeah, this is what I said, probably a shorter balloon. Do you want to try to go there with a seven by four or would you leave it? It's, it's a clodican anyway. It's quite... Yeah, exactly. But I would I would make a, only with a POBA at seven by 40 millimeter. Okay, perfect. More... So we, 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 we can go to Bella and then we're going to come back. I, I agree with yeah. you. So a, a quick, a quick uh, shot from everyone. Bella, would you use a seven by four here or would you leave it? Um. It's a difficult one because it's a claudic and it doesn't... Yes or no? Well. Yes or no? Yes, I would. Yes. Thanos, would you do? I would do it, yeah. Erika, would you do? I would do a second angle and then decide. Okay. Anyway, I think you have our blessing. Uh, not, I'm not talking about Erwin, but I'm talking about our, our choice. So how do you see the main utilization of IVL, standalone or combination therapy? So the option number one is IVL standalone. The second one is IVL plus POBA. As we said before, very calcific lesions. There's no really data supporting, they're not really data supporting the use of uh, DCB in such uh, calcified uh, uh, cohort of patients. IVL plus DCB, so the contrary, and IVL plus stent. What's your usually, I mean, of course, every case is different compared to the other one, but how do you see the shockwave in your clinical practice? In the meantime, that you're voting via the app, we are going to ask Elias to comment on the, the pictures. So what about this popliteal? Give you now the final angio from the popliteal artery. I already treated with a seven millimeter poba. Seven, seven by, by four, a short one, yeah? yeah. More yeah. radial pressure, radial and, force. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And it looks now better, and I would say there is no dissection, and no relevant stenosis. i give you a second view. That's beautiful. That's very beautiful, yes. To be honest with you, I also would like you to show also the foot in order to see there's no, just to confirm, yeah, like yeah, yeah. all the data say that there's no distal embolization because this is what usually people are worried about using this device. Is there a distal embolization? So if, if Elias didn't have a distal embolization with such a big amount of calcium treated at multi-segmental level, probably, you know, distal embolization is something that we should really uh, not be uh, worried about. So let's see if uh, there was a, there was a definitely a decent outflow. We said a patient, probably a big smoker, Rutherford three to four. So let's see, let's see the, the foot. So. 
Here we are. No bubbles. Also, it's important uh, not only into the balloon, but also into the catheter. So yeah, here okay. we are. So let's see what's going on down into the foot. And I bet 1,000 pounds that there's no distal embolization. Who are you betting with? <laughs> I don't know. Against? Yes. Okay, that's great. That's a very, the very uh, complete foot arch as before. So essentially, we are very happy. Essentially, Elias, I don't think there's much to comment. It's a perfect result with a perfect device. Uh, uh, you know, I think that the patient should be very happy to have been treated with the, with the, this technology. What do you think? Exactly. That's that's it. Um, I'm very happy with this result. The patient will be very happy, and uh, I have. Um, no distal embolization. We don't have any dissection. There is no um, need of for um, stent um, implantation. So that's uh, really um, easy and very effective treatment for this kind of heavy calcified lesions. Exactly. And when you say effective, there are two ways. The, of course, the clinical effectiveness. But also, I have to say the the, the cost effectiveness because I mean uh, the, the 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 price of two cents at that level. If we would have used probably a high pressure balloon or a scoring balloon, then would be would have been higher. And actually, if you use the directional atherectomy or the other uh, the, the, the concentric atherectomy like the jet stream, then we would have put also a filter. So I mean, from the cost point of view, I think a shockwave is a, is a good deal. Am I right? Exactly. I agree completely with you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we have finished uh, from Beth Krotzigan. Uh, uh, congratulations, as usual. You are a master. You're just confirming what we all know. You're a master of uh, lower limb interventions. And in the meantime, I would like to put up the results of the last poll in order to comment them with all of you. So essentially, the, the uh, different... Uh, uh, um, Can you different... some Ah, okay. There are different uh, 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 answers. Let me see. Let me put it there. So IVL as a standalone uh, treatment is 25% uh, and IVL plus DCB is 75%. So it's mainly seen uh, as a vessel preparation and uh, less uh, like a vessel, complete vessel treatment. Now, very like a spot on comment uh, about uh, these results. Bella, how do you see the IVL in your practice? Probably like Enrico said, more usage, um, more aggressive sizing, more confidence to know when exactly what lesions to use and when. Um, so yeah, that's the direction. Uh, no, but no, I just no, no, sorry, to... sorry, probably I was not clear. How do you see in your like uh, comparing your practice to the poll? Do you see it a standalone plus PTA poll? Oh, no, sorry, I agree with the poll. Uh, I would be using it with DCB. Okay, Thanos, what would you do? Uh, for me to prep tool mostly so i i would definitely do dcb or at least topoba afterwards yeah okay enrique again i have to uh, answer a little bit more complex because i think it depends on where you use it in the ilic arteries for example uh, prior ever uh, i do uh, i don't do um dcb so i do only shockwave if we want to go up uh, to to treat for example an, an aneurysm um for other regions, there are no uh, no data. For example, mesenteric arteries or renal arteries, but still we do uh, DCB after shockwave. Usually in the femoral or pleteal region, I always do DCB after IVL. Okay, I think it's a very complex answer. And actually, it also reflects the complexity of your practice and our practice. For me, like if I have to close with my opinion, if someone cares, uh, for me, I'm a, I'm not a big believer of DCB in that, uh, in that uh, these calcified lesions. So my opinion also, looking at the data, which are not still uh, very, uh, you know, uh, clear about uh, paclitaxel is usually they use shockwave plus poba. And actually, I think personally that this is a more recoiling issue than a neo intimate hyperplasia. But anyway, I think it's, uh, we are here to discuss and we all more or less agree on uh, what's the best treatment. So now, despite I'm Italian and despite, uh, uh, you know, I'm a, a messy guy, we are almost uh, finishing time. I think I have to thanks uh, all the, uh, uh, participants, uh, uh, of course, as a faculty, we need to, of course, thank uh, Dr. Nuri, who was uh, live from Brad Krotzigen. Again, you know, thanks, uh, Elias. Uh, you have seen that you have used now a means control uh, uh, device in order to close your access. So, uh, and it was also important to say that uh, shockwave passes through uh, not the big sheets, you know, even the, the eight millimeter, the seven millimeter passes through a six French. Am I right, Elias? Exactly, exactly, yeah. <laughs> 
so that's that's also a very good point. You know, that if you want to use under seal, Minx control, uh, ProGlide, whatever you want to use for closure. I just press. Um, <laughs> then I also have to uh, thanks, of course, uh, Bella Wazen from, uh, as you said, Lancashire in uh, in the UK. At least uh, she's the she's a proper British compared to me uh, or to Professor Saratsis from Leicester, who's a uh, Greek uh, by birth and uh, and English uh, by you know now uh, <laughs> by practice by osmosis. So, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so is uh, it was a pleasure to have you both uh, in our call, and actually also, of course, the the pleasure to have had uh, uh, Enrique Lafont from uh, from uh, Switzerland, who kept also probably us in time because it's just four, and the Swiss guy was very effective on this. So uh, nothing to say uh, more uh, apart from uh, the beautiness of having passed an hour with you, and uh, just. Uh, uh, remember you that this is the shock week and uh, Friday is the next appointment so I hope to see you uh, uh, all uh, online for the third episode of this amazing week thanks again uh, to all the participants thanks again to all the people who voted and uh, thanks uh, to all the people who are looking for better ways to treat their patients see you on Friday thank you so much mm -hmm.